Hello, hello, hello. I am Alucard Night Raven. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my next retro review. Today I'm looking at Transformer Cybertron, still sticking with Cybertron line from 2005, a little bit into 2006. This is Breakdown and he is from Velocitron or the Speed Planet. And as with the others, he comes with his Cyber Key. He, he has a Cyber Planet Key. And it's the regular Speed Planet one. Translucent red, that chrome, the silver painted all the way around. You know, you can see the gauges detail, which is very nice. And being the U.S. release, it's got that code on the back that no longer works. On a website that's no longer around. <laughs> but we'll take a look at Breakdown. And you can see Breakdown is sort of this, um, like, uh, rally car. Well, not rally. Um, almost like a formula racer um, type of thing. Just very, uh, has its own sort of look, which is, isn't too bad. Kind of cool. But you can see some translucent yellow going all throughout on the windshield, on this piece, the front wheels, the rear wheels, which also has a little bit of gunmetal gray, maybe close to black, painted in on the rim, so very nice there. A lot of gray plastic, brown and uh, bronze, very cool. Here we uh, can see the Autobot symbol, some yellow right there see engine detail here again very nice it's very cool there's the bottom and he rolls very nicely so loving that and again I there's not a whole lot for me to hate on with these figures I think the Cybertron line still is one of the best lines we have ever gotten and it'd be nice to have something like this again, you know. But we're talking about breakdown. <laughs> so again, looks very cool. There he is from the front, from the top, back, and on this side. So very nice. So his uh, cyber key power does not work in his vehicle mode. That's because it's this piece right here. And you can see... Where the cyber key plugs into is hidden or kind of blocked by everything else. But what we'll do is we shall get into robot mode. So let's first raise you up a little bit. And first thing we want to do, we want to untab the arms from the legs. And they tab in and see right here, they sort of clip in right there same thing on this side for now we will just leave the arms out like that now we swing out the legs like this rotate down the feet unpeg the legs which is uh, this peg right here it plugs in right there now next thing we will pull this out Set that off to the side. Want to rotate. Okay, so in vehicle mode, we want these down like this. For robot mode, we want to rotate them up like this on both sides. And then what we do is we bring this down. Then this comes up. And this also has a soft thoop point right there. So we want to make sure that we have that out of the way. So then this will come down and this will come up. And the final piece is we rotate his robot head around. And there we have Breakdown in his robot mode. And he looks pretty cool. Uh, he's a little guy. This is when we had uh, what they called Scout Class. So some of the smaller figures are... We're in this size class. Um, it's similar to what we're getting with the core class. It's it's around that kind of size. I think he might be a little bit bigger. But honestly, not too bad. So let's bring him in close. Sorry, I need to 
to raise you up a little bit again. Look at that head, and you can already see some really good light piping. Like his eyes shine. Like looks really good. You can see he's got that wise old man beard going. Uh, it's a slightly different color than the rest of his face. Uh, his head is brown. Of course, the yellow light piped eyes. Now the rear wheels are his shoulders. You know, all in brown. You can see the back of the vehicle is now his chest. Some more of that bronze. Autobot symbol there, some more of this gray plastic, bronze on the knees and around the feet, and the feet are brown. There's the back of the figures. So everything folds up quite nicely. Um, of course, these are hollow, but they need to be for the transformation. But yeah, not too bad at all. Articulation, the head can just move back and forth it is a little tight arms can't really go out very far can do a full 360 so there is that um, elbows on a ball joint so we can get uh, rotation as well as a little over 90 on the elbow and that is also his hand so there's that no waist or yeah maybe a little bit no a little bit of waist little bit of waste so just not much he can kick out forward that far kick back that far and can't really kick out too far at all uh, he's got over 90 for his knee and then his foot feet just go back and forth and that is it now for his weapon which was his engine in vehicle mode and again very cool but what we do we'll bring it in take a look at that very nice we take the cyber key plug it in and it did not want to spring out see it's supposed to spring out i think there might be something wrong with the spring so yeah clips in and then yeah, it's supposed to spring out. I think the better way of doing it is from the top. No, maybe not. Yeah, I think the spring on mine is broken, which is unfortunate. And what's a pain is the spring looks like it's, uh, if you can see, I don't think you can see, is in there. A tiny tiny spring and I'd have to do way too much of messing around with it to fix it so it's fine I mean it's not the end of the world it's also an older figure but we plug it into his hand with this post right here and here he's holding his weapon so he can slash slash bring them Decepticons down trying to take the key from Velocitron <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's not bad of a figure at all. <clears throat> so yeah, that is Transformer Cybertron Breakdown. Again, very cool. It's uh, I like the fact they used a name that we had established. I believe it was on a Decepticon originally in G1. And they kind of gave it to an Autobot. Or, well... If I remember collect correctly, the Japanese um, release did not have the Autobot symbol there. Uh, they were not really affiliated. Um, which would have been cool if Hasbro would have done that at the same time. Because technically they weren't affiliated with either. But they always prefer to do good. They're uh, from Velocitron. That's who they are. They're Cybertronians, but their planet is Velocitron. So... Yeah, but it's cool that they took a name typically for Decepticon, gave it to this character who's on a whole other planet. It's all about speed, all about driving fast. And yeah, love the concept. Very cool figure. Sure, the articulation is limited, but we haven't really seen like brand new types of figures like this 
I'd say pretty much since this. I think everything after Cybertron was very movie-esque or G1-esque. Like Transformers Prime, quite a few of their vehicles were very movie-style. Not, of course, they also Transformers Prime also did it better than the movies. <laughs> but then after that, with Combiner Wars, Titans Return, uh, Power of the Primes, and and then the War for Cybertron trilogy, it's all been very G1 style. And I love the G1 style. I absolutely love the War for Cybertron trilogy. Don't get me wrong. I'm loving getting G1 style figures along with their slightly altered um cybertronian style modes and seeing like updates of the beast wars figures absolutely love it but i want to see some originality like we had with transformer cybertron like, i would love to see them come back to do original figures both names we recognize some are some people may hate it that's too bad change is not always a bad thing change can be good after all transformer cybertron there was a lot of change with that it was completely different than anything we'd seen before with the figures we had the rescue style vehicles we had animals we had all different kinds of figures we had characters that had never seen a figure before we had new characters we had characters that had old style older names that had never been used for a good guy or a bad guy. It, but I'm going off on a tangent. Like I said, excellent figure. Absolutely love the Cybertron line. Um, yeah, the articulation is not the greatest. The gimmick is, um, you know, it was fun in the beginning, but, you know, you lose this, and on some of them... You're, you're pulling at it and other things in order to get the um, um, gimmick to work because you don't have this piece. So there's, there's that. So it would be nice if, you know, we saw them come back and do something with the Cybertron guys again. Do an updated version of them. I mean... They've done G1 how many times in, in the past, how many lines? So let's let's do something else that we hadn't seen before. I mean, now they're, they're updating the Beast Wars looks. Very cool. I understand the next one is Legacy, and we're going to get more updated style figures, and that's going to be cool. But I would really love to see them tackle and update all the Cybertron guys. Like, that would be wonderful. But... That's just my opinion. It's how I feel about it. For me, great figure. Great line. Absolutely love them. Um, especially with how unique they are. But, uh, yeah. Um, if you're looking for this guy, I don't know what you're going to be spending on eBay. He's going to be a tough one. Uh, I'll tell you that. Um, but if you do find him, I hope you don't have to spend too much for him. Um, if you are working on the Cybertron slash Galaxy Force line, uh, good luck. Uh, some figures are going to damn near break the bank. <laughs> I'm speaking literally. Like, Metroplex alone, it, I think for one out of the box for the Cybertron line itself, you're probably looking a few hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollars, easily. You find the Galaxy Force one, in the box, you're probably spending eight, nine, a thousand dollars for him is what what people are wanting for him. So, good luck. I wish you the best of luck if you're finding these guys, trying to get them. I really hope you do. But that is going to be it for me. So that is Transformer Cybertron breakdown. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. So please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all later.